Well, welcome back to What's Up with Prophecy Today. The title of today's study is The Godhead. This is part two of a multi-part series on studying the tabernacle and the casting down of the censer. So today we'll be looking at the Godhead, and this is a preliminary sort of a background study. So as we get into the tabernacle, you'll understand that even better. Well, as I mentioned, today we're going to study the Godhead. So we want to go back to the beginning of things. We want to go back to the beginning before God created anything and take a look at what the Bible says about that. Well, back in eternity past, there was a Godhead. And this Godhead decided to create a family. Now each member of the Godhead agreed that they would take on a unique, separate role in raising their family. Now today, we refer to the Godhead as God the Father, Jesus his Son, and you can read more about that in Psalms 2, verses 7 and 8. I'll look at that with you in a future study. And you can also, also the third element of the Godhead is the Holy Spirit. Now, each of the Godhead has always existed. Each is equal in their godly powers. But at some point in the past, when they decided to have a family, they decided to separate their powers. Now, you won't find this exactly as I stated it uh, in the Old Testament or in the New Testament, but you will find many, many Bible texts, especially in the New Testament, that identify that the God the Father and Jesus and the Holy Spirit has has three unique roles. And I'm going to be showing you some of the Bible texts that uh, kind of indicate this, all right? So let's go ahead and we're going to look at some supporting scriptures that might support my preposition here. Okay, we start off with Malachi 2, verse 10. And it says here, have we not all one Father, has not one God created us? Well, that seems to indicate that there is only one God, and that God is called Father. But we need to look at multiple texts before we can really understand what the Bible is saying about the Godhead. So let's take a look at John verse one, or chapter 1, verse 3. And this says that all things were made by him, that's Jesus, and without him, that's Jesus again, was nothing, uh, anything was made that was made. So Jesus is the creative arm of the Godhead. He created everything. Now let's take a look at 1 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 6. It says, but for us, there is one God, the Father, by whom all things were created. In other words, the Father requested Jesus to create everything and for whom we live. Again, for us, there is one God, the Father, by whom all things were created. And the Father, I believe, requested Jesus to create all these things. And we will be looking at some other scriptures that will indicate this in more detail. Following here, and there is one Lord, that is Jesus Christ, through whom all things were created. So here, right in this Bible text, we see that all things were created for the Father, and Jesus was the creative element through which all things were created throughout the universe. Isn't that amazing? Now that 
um, idea that Jesus made all things is quite prevalent throughout the New Testament. So this is not an isolated text. There are many other texts that would go along with the same uh, idea. Now let's turn to John 17 and see what that says. 17 verse 3. And this is eternal life, that they may know you, the Father, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you, the Father, have sent as part of your plan to save mankind. So God the Father sent Jesus to earth to uh, work out the plan of salvation for mankind. God the Father is, is the head of the Godhead, and he sent Jesus to earth uh, for our salvation. Again, in John 10, verse 30, and this is Jesus talking. Jesus said, the Father and I are one. And I'm going to talk more about this in just a moment. But they're one in purpose and goal and spirit. But they are two separate gods. Two separate gods. Well, in 1 Timothy chapter 2, we read this. Uh, starting with verse 5. For there is one God who came to save us, and one mediator between God the Father and man, or mankind. And that mediator, mediator is the man Christ Jesus, who voluntarily gave himself as a ransom for all. So, yes, there is one God that saved us here, and that's one of the, tr the Trinity, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. So this is the one that came to be a mediator between God the Father and us. That's Jesus. Now we go over to John 14, and we read in verse 6, Jesus said unto the him, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no man cometh to the Father except by me. He's saying that I am your mediator to reach God the Father. Isn't that amazing how the Bible really spells this out as we look at various texts and put them together? In Genesis, we read Genesis 2. It says, Therefore a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. Now this relationship between Adam and Eve illustrates the relationship within the Godhead that each have with each other. So the three gods are united in love for each other and they created a family based on their eternal love principles. So they got together, I'm using really sort of common words here, but some point in time in the past, in eternity past, they got together and they said, you know, we should create a family that we can raise and love like we love each other. And this was their goal when they created the angels and when they created uh, us on earth. Okay, we're going to take a look at some Bible texts here where all three gods are indicated in the Bible text. And we're going to start off here with John 14, verses 25 to 26. And it says, All this... This is Jesus speaking. Uh, have I spoken while still with you? But the Advocate, that's the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name. So the Father in heaven sends the Holy Spirit in Jesus' name. And the Holy Spirit will teach you in all things and will remind you of everything that I have said to you. So that's the goal, that's the purpose of the Holy Spirit, that God the Father 
has sent to earth to remind us of the things that Jesus did and said while he was on earth. Now let's take a look at this next Bible text. This is in 2 Corinthians 13 verses 14. It says, The grace of Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God the Father and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you. So here in this one Bible text are all three elements of the Godhead. Now let's take a look at another Bible text. Matthew 28 verse 19. Now this is a very familiar text to anyone that has ever studied the Bible. So this is Jesus speaking and he says, Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. So this text has all three elements of the Godhead, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Now here's how I view all these roles of the three gods, the Godheads. So there's God the Father, and he, amongst the three gods, they decided that he would be the head of the family. He would lead and direct his family, but he would be forever uh, hidden in unapproachable light, and his holiness and grandeur that would be hidden from his created children. And it says in many places in the Bible that we will never see him directly. We'll see Jesus and we'll feel the influence of the Holy Spirit, but we will never directly see God the Father. He will be hidden in unapproachable light. And God the Father is the only one that has foreknowledge. In other words, he can see into the future. So God the Father is hidden in unapproachable light, and he is the only one that has foreknowledge of the three. So let's take a look now at Jesus. Jesus' role is that he would live in the flesh amongst his created children, amongst the Godhead's created children. And he would demonstrate firsthand the character of God, of the Godhead. So he would be amongst the people, amongst the angels, before earth was created. And he, he would be amongst the people on earth, demonstrate firsthand the Father. And he said that many times. If you have seen me, you have seen the Father. That was one of his roles. Jesus would also be the creative arm for the Godhead, for the Father. And the way this sort of works is that the Father requests something uh, to be created, and Jesus creates, creates it. Even though he creates it, it still belongs to the Father. And that is actually uh, illustrated in several places in the New Testament. So Jesus is the creator arm of the Godhead. So everything that you see on earth, everything that you see in the sky and in the universe was created by Jesus. And God the Father also saw something because of his foreknowledge. God the Father saw that mankind would sin in the future. So Jesus volunteered to step in and pay our penalty in, in place of us. So anyone who accepts Jesus' sacrifice will be saved. So Jesus volunteered to do this. So he is our Savior, and it is through his sacrifice and his blood and dying on the cross, anyone that accepts that sacrifice will be saved. Let's look now at the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit would be forever invisible. Now, he is just as much a God as Jesus or the Father. There is no difference in their abilities or their powers, if you will. 
but the Holy Spirit will be forever invisible. That's the role he chose to the children that Jesus created throughout the universe. And, but he's going to be the communicator between every created being and God the Father. Isn't that wonderful? So when you pray, it is the Holy Spirit that takes your prayer to God the Father and God the Father and Jesus and the Holy Spirit answer that prayer. Also, the Holy Spirit is the only God that is everywhere at the same time. Now, I can't figure this out with my small mortal brain here, but the Holy Spirit, the third element of the Godhead, is everywhere at every time. So no matter where there are people, he is there. Remember, when Jesus was on the earth, Jesus was only at one spot on earth at a time. But the Holy Spirit can be all places at the, at the same time. So he carries your prayers and everyone else's directly to the Father immediately. So this is a wonderful thing that the Holy Spirit does. Well, I want you to seriously consider the material I've shown to you today. And if you think there's any mer merit to it, I would, you know, you look at it and think about it. Uh, there may be some merit to my thoughts. And you may want to view this and uh, this video after you see some other videos in this series. And I think as we go along and you come back and review this again, this uh, little study here will make more sense to you as we go along. So in our next video, uh, we are going to take a look at more details of God's salvation plan. Now, I have broken it down into four stages. Now, the Bible doesn't do that, uh, but I have done it here for, the, for my uh, use in illustrating this to everyone in these videos. So, these are the four stages that I sort of have broken God's salvation plan down uh, into. Stage one is before man was created, and that will be our next video. So we'll, we'll cover that in our next video. Stage two, we're going to talk about what I call the teaching plan. And then in, in the next video after that, number three, I'm going to re talk about how God is going to review our records. And then finally, stage four, and I'm giving it kind of a, a, a interesting name. I'm calling it the final exam. So you won't want to miss that. But we're going to go along through each one of these stages, and each one of them will build up on top of the other. So you don't want to miss any of these. So today we studied the three uh, uh, Godhead, the three gods of the Godhead. So I hope you got a blessing from this, and stay tuned, and we'll see you in our next video.